Good afternoon to everyone and welcome to Business Technology Standards uh, Wednesday webinar. My name is Katri Kolesnik and I'm leading Business Technology Forum, which is a not-for-profit company developing the open source business technology standard. Uh, today, we're going to uh, talk to you about the service lifecycle management. Um, just for you to notice that we are recording this session. So today, um, the agenda. So before we dig, dig, dig deeper into the service lifecycle management, I'm going to tell a few words about the BT standard and the community behind it. Uh, for especially for those ones who are new to the business technology standard. Then we are going to see the highlights of, of one of the extensions called the business, uh, the uh, service lifecycle management presented by my colleague Elena. And uh, at the end, uh, we are going to have the questions and answers. You can, of course, uh, ask questions already during the webinar by using the chat. And, and we take them at the end of, of the uh, webinar. We also ask you, uh, you to, uh, uh, to send some questions beforehand. So we do have the answers for your questions if, if you did send them beforehand as well. So we will show them, we show the answers at the end of this webinar. So let's begin first now and, and, and have a look at what business technology standard is uh, about. So it's an open source and um, uh, co-created with the development community, uh, which also is open. So if anybody, any organization that um, wants to be part of this development community, you can suggest uh, some topics and, and they can be then uh, developed together and added to the standard. Um, this, uh, the, the standard as it is today has been co-created together with some leading Nordic organizations uh, from public sector and, and private as well. Uh, there are a very large community, a global community that had, has been deploying uh, the standard already and, and all those who have been part in developing or deploying uh, the BD standard are really willing to share the experience around it. Uh, our development partners are King's College London and now the university that get to verify uh, everything we pu publish uh, into the BD standard beforehand. So um, here is how it, it, it works. So if we leave from the left side, this is uh, where the development takes place. And as I said, any organization feeling that something could be added can propose and um, the topic and, and join and co-create those things together with the Business Technology Forum. What we do then uh, as BG Forum, uh, we uh, teach and we organize trainings around the materials, uh, around uh, various parts of the BD standard and provide also uh, e-learning uh, uh, tutorials uh, about the BD standard. Then, of course, there is the user community, a very vast community of uh, public uh, and public organizations and private companies who are using the model. And as I just mentioned, they are really willing to share the experiences in, in using the model so everybody can learn more. And this is the way the model keeps on being evergreen. So uh, anybody then wanting to start using the model. So the first step is uh, to go to the managebt.org website where you have the, the basic, uh, the foundation of the model. So you can download the book and, and you can also then do the first uh, level examination, certification exam for the green card. Then you have two options. You can either deploy those uh, different models and frameworks on your own use the self-deployment way of, of implementing the model, or then you can uh, use assisted deployment, meaning that you can contact a uh, certified in implementation partner in your territory and, and ask them to support you with the implementation. And then again, you can ask them for also training services uh, to support the organizational change. As BT Forum, we uh, and uh, we do all the um, we share the information and we communicate what is happening in the community community in LinkedIn. So please follow us 
the business technology forum in LinkedIn to be uh, to keep up to date uh, what happens in the community. So uh, three ways of, of already take part to the different things you, uh, within the community. So as I said, you can go to the website and download the book and, and take the exam, or then you can take the training courses. Uh, our training center is in Malaga. And later on, you will see, um, you get to see also uh, the uh, QR code where you actually can see the training dates. And, and then if over there, there are any potential partners or even uh, organizations that would like to do the code development. So we are very willing to um, do this within the EU programs as well. So here is our certification training levels. So the first level is the BD standard green card. And this is for free for anyone. So if you are interested, to test your knowledge on the BT standard, to let us know and, and you can send us an email. Then the next level is the practitioner level. Uh, that's a two day course, it's taken uh, like standalone. And uh, after that, you can certify and become a business technology standard practitioner. There you get uh, all the materials in PDF format. And when I say when I uh, talk about the all the materials I'm also referring to the extension materials that are not available directly on the website but for example today we are gonna show you some some one of those extensions called the uh, service uh, lifecycle management so the third level then is the designer level and there we have uh, various topics there is the operating model uh, the data governance Entrant development and service governance uh, designer levels. And after those courses, you can get certified as a designer and then you get all the materials in PowerPoint format as well. So there down on the left side, you have the QR code uh, to check the scheduled, uh, schedules for the trainings. So today we are going to talk more about the service lifecycle ma management, which is one of the uh, 13 extensions uh, available today in the BD standards. And here is also then uh, some information about the upcoming course, which is a combination of the one day practitioner course for service designer, for, uh, service governance designers, and then the two day service governance designer course. So if after this webinar you are interested in learning more, please have a look at the course um, in our website. But now, uh, without further ado, I give uh, stage to Elena, please. All right. Um, good afternoon, everyone, from my part as well. We are going to be, um, I'm going to be the, giving you some highlights on the service uh, lifecycle management. And uh, as Katri mentioned, we actually have quite a lot of those extensions. As you can see in the middle column there, um, there are a few listed and released already. We have uh, created as well uh, some, um, let's say, called industry adaptations, which is going to be released somewhere in May, and you'll hear more about that later. But now for the service um, lifecycle management um, extension highlights. Um, let's first look into um, this uh, picture. So if you are familiar with the business technology standard, we actually define uh, three dimensions to business technology. So on the left, you will see the uh, digital front line. Um, this provides new business opportunities and requirements. Um, re and it always requires consistent designing and how to face customers, partners, and, and so on. And here, the lifecycle uh, management's objective is to enhance user experience essentially. And this means uh, planning use cases and user cases, customer journeys and fulfill user expectations. On the uh, right side of this uh, picture, you will see on the blue side, um, 
is the backbone dimension. Uh, this is where the traditional information technology management uh, function is and responsible for development and management um, of digital and administrative um, solution professionally. So the objective of the service lifecycle management here is for smooth operation, um, for operational performance. So um, they essentially plan um, the, the processes and uh, operational so operation of the services that essentially fulfills the business expectations. Then the third dimension is the black one on top there. That is um, about uh, transforming uh, business capabilities. Essentially, um, emerging technologies are accelerating the digital uh, transformations quite a lot. And it requires uh, the business and process development to um, be governed uh, well and accelerate as well. So in this dimension, the service uh, lifecycle management ensures the business fit essentially and, and um, plans the IT uh, enabled business capabilities and services. So that is the, um, the objectives of the, the lifecycle uh, management in the business technology. If we then um, go and see what are, what is the service? What is a service defined by business technology standards? So um, a service means enabling of uh, business value outcomes through the different use of technology, right? So the service is delivered through a balanced uh, combination of uh, people, processes, practices, and technology. And uh, these are designed to meet those uh, customer and, and business uh, needs. And here, the idea is that the, uh, to deliver service through impressions and, and touch points with uh, seamless integration and harmonized service uh, experience, uh, regardless of what the underlying element is. So who the actual service providers are and so on. So you can imagine now if you go in to, if you can imagine back to a service that you felt extremely good with, like buying a car, purchasing something, or going into a restaurant, it's the experience actually that is important nowadays. So if you come to a restaurant, and you can't park your car, and that ruins your whole experience. So that's even though the the parking might not belong to the restaurant in that case, you know. So that's that's essentially the idea. So it should be very seamless. Um, if we then look into this, how do we create a business value through um, governing this, these uh, services? The uh, business technology standard focuses on um, essentially maximizing the service uh, management's uh, business value creation aspect. So it includes extensions or guidebooks for the service uh, lifecycle management and service integration. Um, and it relies on the ITIL or SIAM practices for the uh, service delivery part. So that aspect of the service management. So we don't actually have the business standard, technology standard does not actually provide any uh, detailed guidebook for the service delivery itself. The uh, BT standard is aligned with ITIL 4 um, by Axelus, if you guys uh, are using ITIL, and it's also aligned with the SIAM book um, by uh, Scopism. So this means that it is compatible with um, those frameworks and they can be used together. So if someone already has those, um, there's no problem in uh, using the, the BT standard in that sense. So they can be used together and um, it will form a more comprehensive approach basically to service management. Right, so what does that uh, what does that mean service life cycle uh, management is uh, overseeing a um, service from its inception to all the way to retirement so this includes uh, designing deploying operating and and retiring the service so the goal is to ensure that the service delivers uh, the desired results at every single stage. So the service lifecycle management is applied throughout this uh, process and uh, from identifying business needs all the way to realizing the business value. If you look at the left side, um, we can see that service planning and ecosystem uh, development needs to be done on that 
where, where before initiating anything, uh, any projects and so on. And the IP strategy, meaning the, the intellectual property rights strategy should also be part of that service plan. Um, when you go uh, further to the right, where you see the uh, commercial contract, and IPRs. Here we're talking about um, terms of service delivery. Um, the service delivered should be according to service level agreements and so on. So it is important to fully understand and keep track of the solution um, or service terms and conditions over the span of the entire life cycle. Then um, Identifying the service categories are uh, described in the sourcing strategy, which is a little bit to the right side there on the blue boxes. Um, the service management together with the, 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 the sourcing essentially is responsible for developing and managing vendor relationships. And, and uh, that's that box there. So that focuses on those. And then we have the um, uh, supplier relationships as well. The service managers maintain those uh, supplier relationships, relationships through um, essentially regular meetings that address um, the uh, development plans, but also performance and cost and uh, opportunities to expand that type of relationship. So when we're talking about sourcing, it's not just the sourcing responsibility, but the service managers are responsible for relationships as well. Then um, we have also on the blue box there on the right side, we have the financial planning and control. Um, third one from the right, I think. Um, it involves uh, essentially contribution and collaboration with the finance unit, for example, regarding service cost levels, um, business value of ongoing services, and how to justify further investments essentially. And then um, service retirement, of course. And um, resources and asset management. Um, in today's uh, business, you don't, we're not talking about direct uh, work or, or anything like that. We're talking about purchased work. So resource could mean purchased teams as a service. So development teams, for example, is one of those type of, of things. So the, um, it, they are purchased uh, assets and, and um resources are seen as service rather than individual or, or separately. So that is um, the, the control over the resource and asset management. And if you look at the, uh, the smaller uh, box with oranges, orange boxes in them, in them those are uh, essentially the core elements of the service lifecycle management itself. So we have on the top left orange box, the um, uh, service release. So that ensures that the business processes remain intact when a new or, or a modified solution is introduced. Then we have the um, um, operational readiness, which verifies that these services meet the predefined um, readiness criteria. Then uh, integration, of course, you know, that optimizes and harmonizes and integrates the service operations of several providers. Uh, both internal and external, so it handles both. Then we have service operations that ensures that the um, that the service is delivered efficiently without interruptions. Uh, automation helps us uh, with specific processes or those type of routine processes can be automated. It increases productivity and reduces operational cost essentially. Then we have the last uh, part there, the lower right side, uh, support and uh, service to users. So that's provided um, through a service desk. So that is the end-to-end -end, um, flow that you see there. Then the compatibility I mentioned um, that we are compatible with ITIL. This is one of uh, that example. So uh, compatibility of ITIL here, we take as an example, the uh, service ITIL service value chain. Um, it, how ITIL describe it is that it is an operating model that defines the key activities required to respond to demand and enable value creation by forming and managing products and services. So that's the ITIL creation. Uh, definition of that. Um, the middle uh, framework you see there uh, is, is the ITIL picture essentially. 
if someone here is, is uh, familiar with ITIL. The business technology standard uh, then provides the, for the same purpose, it provides 24 defined uh, capabilities. So you can say that the, the BT standard is actually more comprehensive in that sense. So um, the end-to-end -end development flow, including the design, build, and transition activities, those are actually one integrated flow in the business technology standard. So um, the, those capabilities are, are then available by the way, so each of those 24 capabilities, they're opened up in the managebt.org website. And you can, for those who know the model, the VT standard model, it's also called, it's illustrated in a grid. Um, it's also called the left hand. So if you are familiar with that. And the BT standard extension illustrates um, more of these uh, compatibility uh, slides. So we have also defined the compatibility for, I believe the, um, the, the IT, ITIL service value system and four of those dimensions, right? Okay, so if I go back now to the core elements of service management, the service management, as you know, is a very crucial uh, portion because um, uh, big, uh, like a significant amount of the cost in IT is actually allocated to service production. So. Um, here we define five different elements of the service management and um, it ensures the delivery uh, with high quality, um, essentially, of IT, ser uh, IT services. And uh, it supports and drive the business success. So you need to essentially make sure that these five different elements are supported um, or developed properly. So the first one there on the left is the value-based life cycle and portfolio management. Um, this aligns align the uh, services with the business and objectives and uh, deliver the value. And the middle part there we can see these are the phases of um, service uh, development. So that the two different lines on top there. The number the second one is the green part. So that's a uh, called the Business Driven uh, Service Development. And that develops new services to meet uh, customer requirements and deliver uh, measurable outcomes. So the green part is a, lot, a bit um, about developing the services. And then the um, two uh, orange parts, the three and the four, the third one is about process uh, driven service integration. So integrates the services into the IT environment consistently, um, reliably, and of course, uh, securely. So security is, is taken into account there as well. Number four, it's the ITIL based service operation. So as uh, I said earlier, a part of the service management is actually the, the service delivery part, and that's the ITIL based service operation. So um, operate services um, efficiently and in accordance to the customer expectations, of course. And so the, these all of these elements work together. And then we have the fifth element, which is the uh, uh, automation. So to increase uh, efficiency and effectiveness, um, you could automate the uh, routine tasks um, with a service platform. So all these five elements need to be um, developed in order, understood well and developed in order to have a, um, a good service management. So what does that mean? Um, in practice. So service management is an ongoing journey. So we see it as an ongoing journey and that involves essentially uh, multiple steps to ensure that the services are aligned with the business objectives and delivered um, efficiently and effectively. And here you can see a brief uh, overview of the different steps um, involved in the service management journey, including the key roles. So on, from the left side, we can see the product owner, uh, which is responsible for capturing and prioritizing the business demands. And the business owner um, provides guidance on the business objectives um, and priorities. So they work together and they need to ensure that the new services are aligned with the business needs and priorities. So then if we look into the... Um, 
middle part where you maintain service roadmap. That's done by the product owner and service owner together. Uh, they maintain the, the service roadmap uh, and that the service roadmap essentially outlines the development and delivery of, of new and existing uh, services. Need to follow up development. So the product owner um, work closely with the development team and they ensure that the services are um, developed according to business needs and requirements and they provide uh, guidance to um, and uh, feedback throughout the development processes, essentially to make sure that the result meets the business expectations. Um, then we have um, operational readiness. So the service manager and operations lead, now you can see that the operations uh, lead is coming into the picture, ops lead there. Uh, they are responsible for ensuring that the uh, services are ready for production and can be operated uh, effectively. Uh, they work together and they define the service level agreements and create operational uh, procedures, essentially, to establish, they also establish monitoring and uh, reporting processes. So in the context of uh, service lifecycle management, a service is defined essentially of a set, as a set of activities and they're defined, the designed to provide a specific outcome and uh, for, for your stakeholder or customer. And those activities are uh, typically organized into a service catalog. So uh, the service catalog outlines the services that are available and um, their allocated associated costs as well um, and, and the service level agreement. So those are, they make sure that those are available and always updated. And the operations lead is also accountable for ensuring that the services, of course, run smoothly and uh, efficient and have efficient delivery. Okay. Uh, of course, he also uh, makes sure that they meet the, the cost and documentation is very important. And of course, service level agreement as well. All right. Then I still have uh, one more um, slide to highlight for you, uh, and that is an example canvas. So if we now take, uh, for example, a canvas, I mentioned earlier that the business technology standard um, actually has entered the flow um, in one integrated flow. So the, the design, build, and transition activities are uh, one integrated flow. And here is a canvas elaborating an operational activities for a solution um, development across the stages of uh, demand on the left side there, demand uh, development, release, rollout, service operation, service support, and service consumption. So from the left to right, you can see the big boxes containing those titles and then inside them, the different activities. So the life cycle management journey mentioned previously can be seen as an end-to-end -end flow here. Um, during the uh, demand stage, as I mentioned already, the life service life cycle um, captures the uh, and, and analyzes to determine uh, essentially the need to determine that uh, uh, what those essentially those values are for business values are for the new and or updated services. If you then go through the next one is the follow follow up on development. So they ensure that the requirements are well defined and matches the initial demand. Um, then you need to update the service roadmap. So it is reviewed regularly and maintained throughout the design to retirement phase, essentially. So to ensure that it is aligned with business objectives and priorities. Um, the service catalog is mentioned there as well, um, is again, as I mentioned, updated regularly, reviewed regularly, and it ensures that uh, it has it accurately reflects the current um, state of the service portfolio. So there you have it, um, the path itself. For for and the canvas, it has a lot of details. But like I, like I mentioned, you can actually see the different. Um, if I just take this, you can see the different box here. That's the demand box. Uh, then here's the development. This is the uh, rollout box, the service release, 
Then we have the service operations here. Uh, this is the service support. And then here, this box, the service consumption. So one integrated end-to-end -end flow. Right. And um, before you registered here, you actually um, were requested to give some uh, particular topics that you'd like to hear about. And I will mention them here. I'm not sure if we have the time to go through all of them. Maybe we do. But if you don't catch them, of course, um, you can always go back to this recording and uh, skip through these slides and see what they are. So let me just go through them. So we had a few um, questions to highlight here. And I can just go through them, I suppose, one by one and highlight them for you. And the first one there is uh, to learn about the standards and process roles and skill set required. So uh, actually, this webinar's content highlighted some of the, the standards um, and, and way of working for the service lifecycle management and the, the defined roles. So if you want to have further information, we actually have uh, a whole chapter on the service discipline in the uh, managebt.org. So you can go there on our website. And uh, you can also uh, seek further knowledge through this extension. And I can tell you that these extension actually are like 70 to 100 pages each. So they're quite big. And the highlights actually gives you an idea of what it contains and what the, the principal idea, the main idea of those topics are. But you, you can get so much more with the extensions. And of course, you can check the training page to be able to, uh, as my colleague Katri already mentioned, how to um, get to gain access to these through the trainings. Then um, there was another question about the uh, culture of change and um, to bring people along with us in aligning the service lifecycle management strategy. Well, um, like any cultural uh, and organizational changes, it's, uh, it may be challenging, yes, and you need to have a certain um, process. So here um, we recommend to invest in some business change management process um, that you can address the concerns and the needs of the employees. So need to involve everyone, the employees, um, you need to provide them training, you need to foster collaboration through, for example, um, different uh, town hall meetings or, or meetings and, and create some sort of community, right? And um, you need to align across the different departments and then provide, of course, adequate resources, so tools and so on to understand the new environment. Um, it's very important to secure uh, leadership support. And of course, communication is key. Um, how much uh, information to keep about the commission services, All right? So this is very dependent on the, the company and the industry that you're in. Um, for example, um, for uh, pharmaceutical industry, the requirements are very, very uh, significant or very hard to for, for service ramp down. So you need to retain quite a lot of, of information. However, um, if you go and check um, what are important for you, so you need to check the legal and regulatory requirements, what they are, you can check the uh, operational and security considerations, what it is that is required from your company, and of course the resource constraints, because when you um, retain so much information, you need to have space um, for all that data. So those are the things that you can consider. Then we have um, a question regarding uh, customer success manager. Um, for BT standard, the customer success manager actually belongs to the service delivery part. So that we don't have any um, description for because that belongs uh, again to the service delivery. So we only cover the service governance part, which is the service lifecycle and the service integration. Okay, and this is a good one, Katri will like this. How to implement the BT in a small, medium-sized um, enterprise? Yeah, SME. Is that, the Katri, the um, slide five? Yes, actually. Uh... The company size does not so much matter because uh, the whole point in, in when you take the BT standard in, in use is that there is something you need to adapt, adapt to your, your company and organization. 
and are now depending then uh, how much and what is it really uh, is organization specific. So in that sense, uh, I would recommend to take the course if you want to do this implementation yourself, so you will learn what are the best best ways of, of uh, ad doing the adaptation as such. So I think that's the best way. Of course, then I said the second option is, is to call up an implementation partner uh, in your region and, and ask them for help. Excellent. And that you can also see on the slide number five inside this text. So if you rewind back to that slide, you will see the options as well. Uh, right. And the next one we have about service integration and service uh, and operational readiness. These two elements actually mentioned in this slide already. So if you go back in this deck, so you go back and check those. But we also have further information on the website. Again, managebt.org, um, chapter 6.1. And uh, in the figure 6.2.2, we have um, actually illustrated the whole operational readiness as well. Brilliant. And then I think we have one more question, and this is regarding the, um, uh, let me just see, yeah, regarding the, the slave serve life cycle management of application in relation to IT services. So here um, in the BT standard, um, these topics are end-to-end. Um, -end, so we have given you some figures here that you can look into, um, for example, the 6.0.3. So uh, the term service in general is used in BT standard quite generically, and uh, the idea is that users consume the service. And application-centric services are often uh, referred to in the BTS, BT standard, as solutions. And as such, um, it's typical, typically more complex uh, entities, so it's more, it's essentially uh, more complex and, and it is not the same in that sense. So we have solution management as one of the end-to-end -end governance model um, for the continual development. So there you can actually take, get more uh, information on that in our governance extension itself. So one of the uh, practitioner courses will give you access to those governance uh, extensions. Um, product is a synonym um, as well. So BT, BT standard uses um, agile development for those type of, of uh, services. So all services, solutions, and products are uh, in line uh, with the service lifecycle management practice. And here, the second uh, sort of question is like um, uh, giving an example of ServiceNow's data model. And there, there's some sort of connection, but not clear it is. So here, um, we're saying that ServiceNow and the, the TBM taxonomy, um, in that uh, data uh, model, it makes actually a big difference what it is. So the, the business services and processes uh, may rely on the applications or, or we can say solutions. And uh, in turn, they rely on the IT. So it's a, a little bit uh, different terminology there, but the same principle is, uh, is applied. And we have given you some of those uh, figure again, not reference really, but just there so you can see um, and you can all, you can get them from the managebt.org as well. All right, so that was the, uh, the last question that we got. And I'm going to hop on to the last slide and uh, invite uh, Katri back. Yes. Okay, so um, like in the beginning, I said that everybody can get uh, started even now. So uh, if not yet done, so please do test your knowledge on BT standard by uh, asking to, to get the uh, green card examination. Um, so you, you can start learning yourself. Then uh, please follow us in LinkedIn so you know all the updates, what we are releasing, what are the latest news and uh, when, when we are holding this type of uh, webinars. So keep in contact. And then of course, if you want to be part of the development community, you can then uh, we can discuss further. And, and there is always a, a possibility that we hold uh, like a two or three uh, hour session, what we call a living lab, to go more through all the, uh, the materials. But if you especially are interested in service governance, so we do have this uh, next uh, service uh, 
governance designer, practitioner designer course in Malaga in June. So please have a look um, and, and sign up if you want to know more about service governance. Thank you all and have a nice evening. Thank you and bye-bye.